Um, I should be doing a good long video today, but I'm sure you can hear it. I have kind of a nasty cold. So I just want to do something quick. I thought I'd do a um, tour of my Big Pink Mac toolbox. And just show you how I store stuff in here and, um, you know, tell you how I use it. Especially since it's clean right now. I just have a art journal page I'm starting. And a couple of things drying. Oh, that it's clean. I took everything off it today and scrubbed it now on top and got her all cleaned up. So this Mac toolbox, my husband got me like more than 10 years ago. Um, we bought it from Mac, from the tool guy and Mac only sells these in October for breast cancer awareness, whatever. And it's actually bad drenching for a cure. Now there is a company, you Google the pink box company. They make these, um, and near as I can tell, it's like the same quality. They're like heavy and stuff. So if you really want a pink toolbox and make all the boys jealous of you, you should check them out. Um, this box is very heavy. We bought the extra top for it. This is a, um, solid wood top wrapped in stainless steel. I mean, the sucker weighs it, just the top weighs a ton. When we first bought it, uh, we actually, it went into the basement. Our house in Ohio, my craft room was in the basement for a long time. And I hated it down, I hated it down there because it was so dark no matter how much lighting, you know, I had him put in and stuff, but I didn't have a lot of room. And I could make however much of a mess I wanted, it didn't matter, but when the kids started moving out and, um, you know, we started having an empty bedroom, we moved it upstairs. Well, actually my husband, two of our kids, our boys, and a couple of their friends moved it upstairs, which it had to come up the basement stairs, go out the door, around the front of the house, in the front door. <laughs> it was, it was something. I have a video of it on Facebook. It pops up in my mem memories every once in a while. So it went into a 12 by 12 bedroom that we converted into a craft room. It was pretty good. I had a, a good little space going on there. Um, and then we moved from Ohio to Florida a few years ago. And poor baby, she had to go in storage because we had a second floor apartment. And I was just too afraid to have her on the second floor. And actually, I don't even know if we could have gotten her up the stairs and around the turn and every, you know, like friends, pivot, pivot. Um, so she was in storage for almost 10 months. It was very sad. Um, now, when we moved into this house, we first had her in the guest bedroom. Um, and I had her to one side of the room with a Ikea Expedit, the big one, beside it, dividing it from the other half of the room where there was a full-size bed and then table and stuff. But it was pretty. Um, and we got tons of compliments on that room. But there was, I couldn't work in there because it was, it's a small room. Um, and, but look at this, by the time I pull this drawer out all the way, I could not physically stand behind it, um, like behind the drawer. So I would have to be here at the end, which the drawer is longer than my reach and try and fish things out and shut it to get around behind it. So I was very, Excuse me, very glad to move into the room I'm in now, which is not much bigger. Um, it's like nine by 15, I think, but there's not a bed in here. It's just my stuff. So I actually have room to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hold on, I'm gonna get a drink of water. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a drawer by drawer and show you what I store in here. Um, I do have a peg board on the wall and I put a little frame around it. Um, I have wood mounted stamps across the top. Uh, these are ooh, I have ink on my fingers. acrylic and mixed media brushes. And then over on this side I have my watercolor brushes so I keep them separate. Oh, M&M containers. Uh, 
I went to Disney Springs last week with my son and his girlfriend while they were visiting. And there's an M&M store. And these bottles are like $9.95 a piece where you can buy four for $35. So, like, the pita M&Ms I gave to my husband, he ate them in one night. So I was like, don't throw the bottle away though. I actually bought them this week because I'm one of the bottles. Almond are my favorite. I ate those in two days. He ate those in one day, okay? Just a couple hours. And I haven't touched the mint ones yet. And then I got my peanut butter ones I'm gonna work on. So I wanna keep these and then I'm gonna put a flower in that matches the M&M color. And then I'm gonna put them up on that top shelf. That gonna be a cute little uh, decoration. So the only paint that I keep out because it all lives in the, the top drawer of the toolbox is my designer ones because I think they're really pretty to look at. And I mean, seriously, look at um, those Dilutions bottles. They're so pretty. Ooh. And I need more Distress paint. I only have one color. But that's okay. Um, up here I have mixing sticks and picks of all sizes, glues I use a lot, tools, you know, pencils, tweezers, book thing, a couple of different knives, um, a couple of erasers. Here we have two different alphabet stamp sets. And these little inexpensive ones, but these are really great for an art journal, so oops. And some painter's tape because I'm always needing to paint, paint things. Scissors, brayers. These are clip on magnifiers for my glasses because I'm blind as a bat. I always keep matte medium and white acrylic paint at the ready. Here's my jars for water. And this jar is, um, I put gluey paint brushes in so I can keep them soaking until I wash them. Of course, my Ranger heat gun. My lovely. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. First drawer, top drawer. Y'all, look at that. Is that not some fun in there? Uh -huh. Okay, so we have like your crafty acrylic paints in the back, including some outdoor ones because I painted a tiki last year, <laughs> um, and some uh, chalk ones, some fabric medium, some glitter pocket um, is a fold out color mixing chart more tape <laughs> uh, cheap gouache I bought some cheap gouache at, um, uh, Tuesday morning so I could try it out and I love it so when that's all used up I'll get some good gouache we've got good Windsor & Newton paint permanent rose is my favorite OMG um, Brie Reese these are her acrylic, I think they're acrylic, right? Oh, glitter inks, yeah. I need to get some more just the clear, because I like this just clear glitter, but it's gone. Um, acrylic inks. And then these, a friend of mine had picked these up at a garage sale. They're kind of old. I haven't tried them yet, but I need to. Palette knives, baby wipes, because I always need them. Uh, this is modeling paste. I have a giant tub of it that I've had forever and ever and ever since like 2011. But I always keep a little bit in here so that I don't have to pull the big tub out. And then here are sponges, um, cards, scrapey things. Oh, and bottle caps. Y'all, if you're an art journaler or mixed media, you need to keep some bottle caps in different sizes because they make really good marks. Um, paint pens golden acrylics and then the, this area is all just heavy body um, these Matisse structure ones I got for my friend when she passed away so and I got my Liquitex so these are all just heavy body right here and then the rest of it is your inexpensive um, acrylics which well, I will say you know the Liquitex basics are pretty good and surprisingly enough the Hobby Lobby Master's Touch is actually very, very good. I was I was surprised at how much I liked it. Um, oh, you know what? I have an empty bin. This is gonna go in your home. This is what I use for wiping stamps off. 
because I'm not paying ten dollars for basically a micro microfiber cloth that's marketed for stamps. I'm just not doing it. I'm kind of cheap. All right, so next drawer. Da -da -da. This, my darlings, is the drawer of districts. As you can see, I'm still working on my collection. Don't you bark. I had all of the regular distress colors in the minis and I sold them because I decided I wanted full size pads because um, oxides do not come in minis and it was driving my liking to line things up rain a little crazy. <laughs> So I sold them off to somebody locally and I've been slowly replacing them with full size. Listen y'all, Mermaid Lagoon. <laughs> you need Mermaid Lagoon in your life. So in the small drawer beside that one is more ink pads. Everything is not distress. So all your archivals. Um, I have some other stuff too. I have Stays On, Memento, Memento. Cause Stays On, here's the thing. Both Archival and Stays On are solvent inks, but Archival is oil-based. So sometimes, like if you wanna do glass or acetate, Stays On is just better. The Jet, the Jet Black, <laughs> the Archival stays wet longer because of the oil in it and it's slipperier. So that's why I keep Stays On around. Even though I'm a Ranger girl through and through, Stays On is just sometimes good for things. This is foil leafing stuff because there's no real good place for me to put it and it fits there right now. So that's where it lives. So below the inky drawer, this is water, watercolor and water media land. So tubes of watercolor, and, uh, mixed media crayons, which these I like a lot. These are at uh, Michael's for like either $2.99 or $3.99 ever once in a while pick one up and I love them. Gelatos. This has um, like squirty things and empty paint pans in it because <clears throat> I do like to put palettes together depending on stuff I want to work on. Watercolor pencils, ink tents pencils, which I think both the watercolor and the ink tents, I'm going to buy sets that are in tins. I'm just, for the watercolor, I'm trying to decide what brand I want to get. And I'm going to sell these off because then the tins will just lay in here nicely. Some inexpensive um, shimmer watercolors. I use them a lot. And then I made a little palette on this Mickey palette. Yeah, which these Mickey palettes were like, I think five for a dollar to a dollar tree. And the kids crappy art stuff. So these are colors I use a lot. So I just put them in there and I just pull this out. Especially when I'm doing flowers. Um, that's my flower I'm painting a lot. So the big drawer beside that holds rulers, um, a jelly plate with a jelly brayer, acrylic blocks, my stamp platform. I am going to get the Tim Holtz one though. Amazon, There's a couple of sellers on Amazon that have it again, so I'm hoping to pick one up. And then Ranger has these on their website. And you just print them off and then you can catalog your stuff. I need to put it in a little binder or something, but they just live in here for now. So yeah, that's a nice, nice little perk from Ranger. Thanks Ranger. And then below that, this is my drawer of color. So we have, let's go over to this side. Pan pastels, which I need to really learn to use more. Some Jane Davenport pastels, markers. Distressed crayons, random pens and things, markers, drawing pencils. <laughs> I have a lot. Uh, colored pencils. Fair Castle Pit and C. C. This is what I like. I like the tin because they're small and they just stack. So that's what I do with those water course. Pit pastels. Um, sharpeners and squishy eraser. And there's some chalk pencils in there, some ink I haven't tried yet. This is my charcoal chamois and charcoal pencils. And also a Jane Davenport pen that I haven't opened yet. These are sponges for pan pastels. All right, so. Is that one I just 
did, yeah. So below that one, now we're getting into tools. This is the drawer of tools and refills. This is a We Are Memory Keepers punch board and I've got a couple of different planer punchies for it. Hammers. <clears throat> Tim Holtz Sandy thing. Pink, of course. Scissors and stuff. Random little things. This cool thing from back in the day of using brads a lot. Take this little cap off. And you've got your hole poker. And then, and trust me, you want don't ever lose the cap because let me I've made myself bleed with that thing. So you would poke your hole, get your brad into the hole, and then you would put this little guy down in between the legs. Rocket, rocket, and it was flatten the legs out. Uh, let's see, some sanding things, some more of the plastic rub on things. This, I think this was EK Success. It just has powder in it. So if you have a sticker that you don't want to be sticky, you can brush that powder on it and it will unstick it. So if you want to pop dot it or do something else with it, it takes the stick away. Um, old Ranger, or not Ranger, uh, Fiskers. <laughs> Spring-loaded punchy things. They punch holes, and you can set eyelets with them. And a little pad. Refills. Refills. Extra stickles. These colors are already up on the wall, so when I use them up, then I've got some to replace them with. Tiny attacher. Some more tools. Pliers and stuff. These are um, heavy-duty hole punches. Drawing tool. The label maker. We all need to need a label paper. And then the board beside that is all alcohol inks and perfect pearls and the tools and things that go along with that stuff. Now see, my brain is saying, you need another container right here. <laughs> this drives me a little crazy when I open it. Now below there is the big drawer. Now this I have a giant tub of modeling paste. That's from Utrecht Art in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and anything that's chemically or large bottles um, is in here. So, you know, Mod Podge, resin, ew, slimy, um, sprays, spray glue, all that type of stuff. Anything that's chemically or just a big bottle it won't fit. So then this drawer is more tools. Um, we've got a heat, heat gun, ink refills, parts for something I'm working on. Fisker's hand drill. Y'all, this thing is awesome. I actually bought it way back in 2009 on the suggestion of Mr. Tim Holtz. I was in a class and having a hard time with my hands. He's like, yeah, I'm try this thing out. So I did, I've had it ever since. Pom-pom makers, silicone molds for resin, bits, foam brushes and stuff, staple gun, clips and clamps, because I'm always got something dry I need to clamp down. More molds. And then the final drawer, the bottom drawer, is just kind of random stuff. Um, my drill, extra baby wipes, extra storage things, my splat boxes. I have three different sizes in there. Big baggies. This bag is, um, this is my watercolor kit that I take to the beach. I'll just show you guys what you there someday. Tripod. So yeah, just lots of random things. I have it very well organized. And then underneath, I have a, one of those bags that goes under the bed. You see it? that um, I have like refills for the adhesive runners I used to use for classes and those runners actually, um, extra class materials that I've, I've gotten rid of a lot, but I've held on to a few things just in case I ever start again. So yeah. Oh, and I do keep cloth hanging up there. Um, and you know, rule underneath it. Oh, this bin. This is one out of my dream box. And I use it for things that are in progress in the current art journal and I have a notepad in there. So that comes in handy. So yeah, this is my view. 
what I'm working here. I do want to do something different with the light. This light, um, the neck doesn't stay anymore and it glares really badly on this mat. So I do need to figure out a different lighting situation. If you have any thoughts, <laughs> let me know. That's it. I'll show you the wall of glitter. Ah. And this is one of my favorite cross stitches. My brain is giving me the silent treatment today. As a stroke patient, that means a lot. I um, just painted the, a regular wooden hoop with black glitter. Stuck it right there. And you see little Mickeys everywhere. That trips my grandson out. It's like, oh, the mouse, the mouse, the mouse, the mouse. Yep, the mouse is over there. And there's Hank. <laughs> I got my dew drops sitting there with my glitter for my, um, it's all embossing powder. All that embossing powder used to live in a drawer, but I wanted it on the wall because it's pretty. I'm gonna look at it. So, yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed my little um, toolbox tour. Hope I don't sound too bad. And, uh, you know, remember, be excellent to each other and go make something. Bye-bye.